in a couple of seconds you should see myself, hear me on the computer and also see my screen. Okay, now I see it on my side, so it should be should be working. Okay, any any idea uh, on on the on the lag between the audio? I think it's it's quite high, no? Okay, yeah, I, I have the feeling it's it's something like 20 seconds or so, depending on network connection. Okay, perfect. That's important uh, uh, for the chat. If you have some interactivity going on, then you have to be aware that uh, there can be up to half a minute lag. Okay, so um, what I now suggest is you, you own, so, um, turn off your headphone of the AT&T call and just use the audio channel from the live stream and just in case you want to talk to me we let this um, AT&T channel open but please use the chat so this gives you and myself an idea how the interaction works because at the moment there is no audio back channel which for smaller groups is maybe an issue okay but I just tell you bit how, how YouTube is organized and uh, what you can basically do and then how the live streaming works. So give me two minutes for the, for the YouTube. So if you go to YouTube, you click on the top right uh, button, you get Creator Studio. And what you are seeing here basically is the Creator Studio. So here are all the videos which I have in my YouTube channel. And those are um, those are all from the hackathon now. Those are unlisted. So if we click on one of those, and you see here, uh, there are three things that, uh, of uh, three levels of permission. What you can do: one is uh, open or public. Then it's listed, and also through the search function, if somebody searches for IoT and data science, hopefully. They will find uh, some of my videos and then there is not listed which means if you have the link then everybody can see it and then there's private uh, you need to have uh, uh, the permission and uh, YouTube um, uh, sorry the, the, the Gmail Gmail ID to, to order to, to get access okay so that's that's this uh, and now going back to the creator studio the video manager so all the videos are here and one important thing is analytics. That's why I'm pushing YouTube so hard. I, I will show you in, in a second why. So if you go to uh, traffic sources, then you see that 17 plus 28 percent of all my views that is actually 45, so nearly 50% of all views I get on my videos are either through somebody searching on the YouTube search or clicking uh, on the suggested video. So 28%, uh, one, about one third of my views are because YouTube suggests my videos to somebody else currently using YouTube. And you see here the numbers, even if the channel is not very sophisticated, you see here uh, 7,500 minutes of view time in only one month and uh, 1570 views um, yeah and also you see here the source of the views it's mainly US and India what a surprise uh, and Germany and Switzerland so it should be like that because uh, that's these are the countries where I'm active that reflects and I'm targeting mostly male um, yeah so that's the demography you get so now coming to the live stream so you click on live streaming and the only thing what you need from the YouTube site is uh, the RTP URL. So uh, this you find here, sorry, the RTMP URL. This is this, oh, no, you even don't need it because the tool which we are using uh, includes 
uh, the YouTube as a, as a live streaming provider. The only thing you need is the stream key. So I don't click on reveal because this video will be automatically available to everybody. So there's no access control and it is configured that is being stored as well on YouTube. That means you don't have to even upload it. Um, yeah, but that's the only thing you need the key. Okay, so everybody can use it who has a Gmail account can, can do YouTube video live streams. The tool for doing that is called OBS, Open Broadcaster Software. So it's an open standard. The standard is called RTMP, but I have no clue what it is, means, but actually it's an open standard. And OBS is an open source software available for Linux, so that makes John happy, available for Mac and for Windows. And I, I find it pretty good. There are others, but I'm always using those. So I will show you the tool now. So this is the tool already open and streaming. In order to configure it, I only have to uh, configure it once for YouTube. So you say here, uh, stream. I cannot change anything here because it's streaming, but basically you just say uh, service YouTube and YouTube gaming. You choose the primary YouTube ingest server and then you just paste the stream key. So what I do also in my uh, live streamings, I regularly check the chat box. So no one asked anything, so I will continue. So, and then the interesting part is once this is done, you basically can configure how your stream looks like. So this Star Wars thing uh, <laughs> is because of a wish, uh, uh, video feedback loop, no? That's, that's not a problem. So there I have kind of defined scenes and during my talks I switch between scenes. So that's for example, sorry for the, for the bad lighting, I'm just at home at a convenient place. But So that's the webcam only view when I click on the scene. That's the only the screen capture view, and that I broadcast uh, usually if I am about to start because sometimes uh, I am late because of configuration issues or uh, so I, I open the stream uh, five or ten minutes before and I say we start in five or ten minutes or whatever. Okay, and you can can configure each scene. So let's have a look at uh, this scene here. So I can drag around and change the size of my webcam for example okay and i can also use shortcuts i can define shortcuts for each scene that, that means i don't have to show anybody then that i'm using obs and uh, transition is, is quite smooth you can also define the transition effect so now how to configure such a scene it's pretty straightforward so let's take the wait scene and you can class, uh, just add uh, a plus here and then you can either uh, paste uh, an image or any video capture device like a webcam, uh, audio capture, um, a display capture, that's your screen, or a capture of a single window. So you can also, for example, create, uh, let's say, a view containing only uh, outputs of four of your windows and arrange them accordingly. Uh, I don't know what the rest is. Uh, so you can also play videos uh, if you like and, and stream them and that text I'm using here. Okay, so I'm going back to that scene. So once you're done, you just, ah, yeah, one important thing is you always have to ensure that the audio is getting captured, that everything is proper properly here. What you see here, you see um, this level meter here. Um, if you have audio, external audio files which you want to play at a certain point, here's, here's the slider for that. And uh, then here are the buttons which are important. Uh, it's start and stop streaming. So once you click start, then the channel gets active. That's all you have to do. And stop uh, basically is the opposite. And you can, in parallel, if you like, what I sometimes do, um, record it to my hard drive. Just in case, for example, I have a network issue or something and uh, I really give, give a good talk or something or I'm uh, recording a talk of somebody, then I want to ensure that I have the recording. I, in parallel, also uh, save it to my hard drive. Um, yeah, that's basically it. And what I then do is, since the streams gets recorded, it will automatically 
end up in, in my video manager and from there I can take it and I can click on it. So let's assume for example this is one of those and uh, I then can for example click on uh, I check where this is. So they have a built-in video editor which you can use for example to re remove the first five or ten uh, minutes okay so that's that's basically all I have to say yeah so are there any questions let's try to use the chat for a second later we can go to AT and T so I will double check on live streaming Okay, doesn't seem so. So what I'll do now is I'll stop the stream and we can just go back to AT&T and discuss uh, privately because obviously this is... Uh, I have one, one thing, one last thing. Uh, if you have problems, so at the bottom you see here um, dropped frame rate. So I have a zero, this is good. So that means my configuration is, is uh, good for my upstream speed. But this is also because I have a relatively fast upstream. Let's double check what I have at the moment. No, I have the feeling it's quite slow at the moment. So anyway, uh, the configuration is done. Let me double check uh, where I have advanced. Uh, Oh, so the comments, uh, or it, it's the chat. So you go to the live stream and then you, so I just let it open for a couple of seconds that you see it in the stream. So this is the chat on the right hand side. You should see that as well. You see it, Jana? Yes, perfect. IBM Software Education. Wow, that's a cool name. Okay, uh, what I wanted to show. Ah, yeah, so. <laughs> so, uh, where is that? Ah, here. You can adjust the video bitrate and the audio bitrate. And that actually uh, allows you to, to uh, cope for a, a slow internet upstream, for example. Okay, now I'm having uh, one megabyte per second upstream and that's around eight megabit. So my upstream is 20 megabit, but some of you might have slower upstreams uh, for DSL. So that's uh, usually uh, sometimes only one or two megabit. So you have to uh, decrease the, the stream rate. Yeah, okay, so I will stop now and then we can go to, to 